So welcome to this Vue.js 3 mini course. My name is Fernando and on this one we will create a tiny application with Vue.js uh, version 3. So if you're looking to an easy start to Vue.js, you came to the right place. You just need to know a little bit of HTML and basic JavaScript. So this is what we are going to be creating on this, on this tiny mini course. Uh, it's a tiny game. So what we need to do is to ask a question and after we move through different screens, the application will uh, choose uh, an answer for us. It will tell us what to do. That's the idea. So, okay, so in this case, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna ask for something like, should I do it or something like that? Uh, let me go there, do this. We're gonna be pressing next to move on to the next screen. So this means that we need to store some kind of information and to share some information with the rest of the components. And we're gonna be handling different screens. Now we also have transitions and of course, we can go and go back if we wanted to. So we need to handle that. So I'm going to go do next. And then if I want to uh, get a decision, you know, get an, uh, an answer, I'm going to go and decide it. So this is what it will do. It will go to an array and it will give us uh, a custom, uh, just a random answer, right? Ask a friend in this case. So of course, we can get a new answer if we wanted to, or we can start the application again. And of course, all of this, we are going to do it with Vue.js 3. It's a tiny application, but still uh, requires a little bit of work. And at the very top, notice that we are going to push this. We're going to put this on uh, a real environment. It's running on search. So we're going to deploy to production. So that's it. That's the whole application. So open your IDE and let's begin. OK, so one of the most common questions I get is what IDE I'm using. And what I'm using is Visual Studio Code. It's this one. If you go to the web and you search for Visual Studio Code, you're going to get here. So why am I using this one? Well, everyone is using it. Uh, it's free and it's very easy to use. So there you go. And you can get it for Windows, for Mac or for Linux. So yeah, cool. Why not? Now, uh, of course, this is the one I'm going to use. You can still use whatever you want to use. This is not, you know, you can choose right here. Uh, but wh what we need, really need to use it's Node.js because we will create a template with a CLI and the CLI feeds on Node.js. So you are going to need to install Node.js. So go to the web, find Node.js. And the only thing you need to do is just to download the, uh, the file to install it. And it's just an easy installation. You just need to go through the installation and you can choose this one, which is recommended for most users, or you can choose the latest features. It doesn't matter. Now, once you install it, you're going to need to make sure that everything is installed. So what you will need to do is to open the terminal. Now, if you're on Windows, you will need to go right here at the bottom and type for CMD. And if you're in the terminal, you need to type terminal. But what I'm going to use in this case is uh, the integrated terminal of Visual Studio Code. So this one, what it does, it will open the terminal, the same terminal you open on Windows or on Linux or Mac but it, it will open it right here uh, within the, you know, the, within the Visual Studio code. So this is what I'm going to, I like to use when I do courses, because if not, you're going to have a lot of windows open all over the place and just makes no sense. So uh, the way you check for node, it's by doing node minus B. So what you're doing is just checking the version. If you get the version of node, which I'm maybe a little bit behind, maybe I'm going to need to reinstall node. Uh, that's fine. It means that you are running node correctly. If you're getting something like, you know, command and not recognized or something like that, maybe you will need to restart the computer. So another information that you need to know is that everything we do uh, on every single video, every single section we do on this, on this tiny course is going to be stored and recorded uh, on GitHub. So you're going to, I'm going to be uploading a repository. And each video on this course, you get the exact code for that specific section. So you don't even need to type anything. You just can watch and then just copy the code. And that's it. Now, uh, on this course, we only have two hours. We don't have more. That's what, how, how free courses work on, inside Udemy. Uh, so we only have two hours and we, we need to do a lot of things, including the uh, deploying. So uh, I'm, sometimes I'm going to go a little bit faster. Sometimes I'm going to go a little bit slower. Always remember at the bottom right side of the screen, you have the controls for the video inside Udemy. Uh, so you can go slower. Uh, you can slow down the video if you wish. All right. So that being said, 
let's uh let's start coding okay so first uh, let me show you what we're gonna do and i'm gonna keep using this one as a as a design so we can go back to this one which is the finished application and we can use it just to just to, just to know what we need to do in our application so when the application starts we get ask a question of course and then we get an input and we need to ask a question maybe should i uh, do it or something like that and uh, as soon as we do so we are going to be enabling a button to follow next so we need to do a little bit of validation in this input then when we go next of course we have a nice transition the second transition of the button of the buttons and then we just need to decide if you want to move forward or even you know we can let me just copy this we can even go back and restart the whole you know application and then, then we start over we're going to go next and in this case i'm going to go and decide it and from this one we're going to get a list of uh, different answers we're going to get a random value out of that and what we can do we can decide again to get a different answer or we can simply clear all the settings and start the application again so this is going to be the application we've only had got two hours and um and because you know courses on udemy free courses are two hours long at max you know that's uh, as top as we can go and uh and this is going to be always uh, a free course forever i'm not going to change it i'm not going to you know ask anything for this so okay so let's just begin we need to do a bunch of things first so the first thing is going to the documentation of Vue.js. And remember, right now we are going to use the B3, which is the latest version of US of Vue.js. If you go to the docs, by default, you're going to go to the number two. So if you click here, make sure you are on the B3 of Vue.js. Okay, so that's one thing. And the other thing is that we need to install the CLI of Vue to uh, work, you know, with the V3. So if you go to CLI and Vue.js, of course, you can look at the web right here. And if you go there, we just need to go to get started and they will give you information about how this works. And you can just, you know, go to installation and it will tell you how to install it. So in this case, we need to do npm install minus G and then view CLI. This is what we need to do. So I'm going to go there, going to go open the terminal and I'm going to go npm install minus G. It's going to take just a minute. OK, so after everything is installed, you're going to need to go here. Uh, to the installation and notice that you get a creating a, a project right here option so yeah when you go there it says that you will need to run once everything is installed view create hello world now hello world is the name of the project so i'm going to go and just go right here make it a little bit bigger and i'm going to say view create if the command view create is not working is giving you some something like path not being recognized it's because you need to restart the computer that's you know coming so what you could do, you can say hello, and this will create a directory inside here, inside of whatever you're standing, in this case, decider, called hello, and inside it will put all the files, which is something I don't want right now. I'm already on the directory I want, so I'm going to go right here and say dot. And this will this one will go, will generate a new project, so I'm going to say current directory. Yes, that's what we want. And then it will ask you, what do you want to do, view 2, view 3, or something else? So view two is still very current because you know it's the old version, but right now we're gonna do view three. So I'm gonna go and select view three, and this one will create a project. Okay, so after everything is generated, we get the, all the files right here, and the application will live on the source directory. Now, of course, with any other you know framework, if you go to the package.json, it will tell you how to run the project, and the one we need to listen right here is serve. So if we do npm and then run and then serve, this one will create or run a development server, will start a development server, and the application will run on the 8080. Now, right now it says 8081 because I'm running the other one on the 8080, which is the one I have, I, um, you know, it's finished. But this one is going to be on the local host 8181 in this case. So when you go there, it's going to say, welcome to your view up right so that's it you're running a view application in your computer so of course uh you will need to go to source and if you go to app it will tell you a hint of what it's doing right here and for now it's just saying a hello world from a component so you get a directory called components which is where you're going to be putting all the components and notice it says for a guide and then for a guide so yeah that's the content
So what we need to do is we need to create our, our own components and just, you know, create our own application. So just to do that, I'm going to start over and we're going to start right from the beginning because I don't want to, you know, copy paste anything. I just want to do everything from the beginning because we are learning, right? That's, that's the whole idea. So this one is going to be main app. As soon as I do that, we are going to get main app, right? Okay. So now remember, if I go to our final application, uh, whenever we ask a question with whatever, we have a first screen, then we have a second screen. And if we want to decide it, we have a third screen. So we need three different screens, which means that maybe we need three different components. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to go to the hello world. We are not going to use it. I'm going to kaboom, delete it. And then I'm going to go right here and uh, we have three components. The first one is the initial, right? The other one is going to be uh, the confirmation of the ask of the question. You know, is going to say your question is, do you want to move forward or not? And the other one is going to be the results. So there we go. We have the three names. I'm going to go to new to components. I'm going to say confirm. This is going to be my first component. Confirm. That, uh, of course, is need, needs to be view. Then we have the initial, which is the first component. This one needs the second one. Then I'm going to go here and I'm going to say initial and then view. And then the third and final component is going to be result. So uh, one thing that we are not going to do on this tiny course is going to be uh, CSS because we don't have enough time and CSS got nothing to do with view. It's just CSS. So I'm going to give you a file all ready to go. Notice on this section, you have a download for a zip. It's just a CSS file. And if not, you can get it from GitHub. So I'm going to go and put the CSS right here. Okay, so there you go. This is the style. It's a pretty simple and pretty dumb style. So I'm going to go close it. You need to put it inside assets and we're going to use it in a few minutes. Okay, so what do we need to do? So I'm going to go right here to the app.view. Notice that we have a very a particular kind of a order of things. First, we need a template in order to make a component work. Then we have a script with which we're, where we're gonna is where we're gonna put all the logic about view, and then we have the style, which is just a CSS. So all the other components that right now have nothing, if we include them right here, they're gonna give us an error. So we need something at least. Uh, so I'm gonna go and say that I have a template. This one is going to be the confirm. The other one is gonna be the initial. All right, and I'm gonna copy this one and say uh, result. I made a mistake right there. So let me just do it again. Results. There you go. And this one will be results. All right. So now we have something cool. And on this one, we are going to need to start importing things and, you know, just creating the application because right now we have nothing. We just have, you know, a fail to compile. Let's see what the error is. So it's because we have nothing. Yeah, we have nothing. There we go. Now we have something. So, okay. So first of all, uh, we need to include the CSS somewhere. Now I'm going to go and do it right here. And the way we do to import global, uh, you know, uh, styles is going to be by using the at import. So I'm going to go and say at and then import. And then we get the URL. In this case, what we can do is open and close that forward slash assets because we need to go to the assets directory. And then the name of the file is a style that CSS. All right, that's that's the file. Okay. So okay, so what else do we need to do? Well, we have three components. So what I want to do is show the initial one first. So in order to import components to the app that view, which is like the main central place that uh, you know we're going to show on the screen, everything is going to be a children of app that view. Again, this is like the main component. I need to import components right here. And the first one is the initial, then we need to confirm and then the result. So I'm going to go and say import and I'm going to go and say e app and then initial, initial, and then from dot forward slash components. And then we just bring the, uh, bring the file. So it's going to be the initial and I made a mistake on this one as well. And it's because I, ha I know I, ha I just got two hours and I just kind of are rushing it just a little bit. So, okay, so when they have, we have the initial. So as soon as you do this, it's going to say, dude, you're just trying to import a component that you're not really using. So in order to do this, you need to use it to get rid of the error. 
So if I do a comment, it's going to go away, but that's fine. So this is one thing you get with uh, working with the CLI is the uh, uh, ESLint. Just very normal. So this one is going to be app confirm. And this one will come from same place components and then confirm. What else? We have the other one import is going to be results. Results just like that. And then from that forward slash components and then results. Cool. So now we have the three components. Now, the thing is that the application needs to know, uh, view needs to know that we want to use it. And we do this on the JavaScript side of things. I'm going to do export default open and close. This is how we can create uh, that view magic inside of a component, not just we know HTML and everything else. So the way we do it is by saying components. This is how we let the application let view know that right here on this component, we are going to use other components. Let me make this a little bit bigger. So right here, we're going to use this component. We need to let it know. So it's going to be app initial. We already did it right here. Then app confirm, I'm going to go there and say app confirm and then app results. And just by doing that, we should be getting rid of the, uh, the ESLit. And okay, well, has been registered, but not used. Well, we're going to use it in a few seconds. So, okay. So what do we need to do? Well, remember, I'm going to go right here and I'm going to go and start over. We need to ask a question, which is the title, the first screen, and then we need to handle what is going to happen right here when the user goes and puts a question. And this is going to be the first screen. So let's go to the next section and start building the first screen. All right, so welcome back. And on this one, we need to create the, the first screen, right? But first, we need to solve some issues right here, some problems that we are getting. So you can easily, of course, include any of the components right here. Let's say that we want to do app initial, then we're going to do app confirm. And I'm doing this uh, pretty fast because we it's not the final way. Uh, the final thing we're going to do, we're going to do it on a different way. But you can simply copy paste the name of the components and they will show right there, right? That's how we render a component. We could also name this app dash and then initial. That's a, a bit more recommendable. But in this case, I want to do something different. We have something within view called dynamic components. And what a dynamic component is at the end of the day is just a component that will render a component that we specify inside could be this one or could be this one or could be this one. And the way that this component knows how to render or what to render in this case is going to be the is open and close. And then we need to pass the name. And in this case, Colin is. Uh, is the name of the component. So we can say it just is and pass the name of the component. Let's say we want to do app initial. It's going to fail. So we're going to go reload the application and notice that it says component elements to have a V bind. So whenever we, we talk about V bind is we need to bind the keyword or the property. Right now, I'm not doing it. So I could do V bind or simply use the shortcut of columns. And that it's equal to doing V and then find, right? Okay. So now we are saying, dude, I need to, I need to show the app initial. So it's going to do something, but it's a fail. It's going to fail to do it. Now, what we need to do is to make this of a type of a more string, right? We need to pass a string instead of the name, but then we're going to go back to the other problem. Notice that behind the scenes and you know what? I'm going to go and just show you that this actually works. I'm going to say, I'm going to comment this and notice that we get the initial. So now the component is rendering the initial, but I need this ones as well. So the way we need, we can do so we can make this work. And the way this is intended, you know, to work is what the, with a dynamic value, we need a place where we can constantly change the name of the component that we are going to be rendering. And this is what we do on the final application. When I do next, we are changing the component and putting the second one. So, okay. So we have a components right there, which is the first thing we need. And then we need a centralized place where we can handle data. And the way this works on Vue.js is by using the data. So I'm going to go and say return, open and close. And this one, what it needs to do, it needs to return data. Could be booleans, could be strings, could be objects, could be arrays, 
whatever you want. And this information that we have right here will be accessible from within this template. And if we change it, the whole thing is going to re-render and the, va the values that we are changing are going to be reflected again right here. Okay, so I'm going to go and we need a place where we can tell the application that we want to be switching different screens. So, okay, I'm going to go and create a screens property. And this one will be on a string version, the names of the components that we want to use. So I'm going to go and say that the first one is that the app confirm is the second one. And then we have the app result. And this one, it's equal to the third one. So now, of course, we need a way to tell the application or the component that we want to render this, this, or this. And we're going to pass that information whenever we are inside of each component. Okay. So instead of passing the name, what I would like to do is just to pass a number. This one is going to be zero. This one is going to be one. And this is going to be two because we have an array, right? So I'm going to go and just create a different property called position. All right. So position, since the application starts on the first component, I'm going to set zero. And let me just do it correctly. Position. All right. So now this is this bind is instead of using a string to decide what needs to go there is going to listen to the screens, this list and the position, which is going to be zero, one or two. So we're going to go and say, listen to the screens and that whenever the position changes, you're going to be showing whatever component we want. So if I reload the application and go to our application right now is the initial and we can say it said it says initial and that's cool. Now if I go and change it to one is going to be app confirm. If I go and change it to the number two is the final screen result. And we're going to trigger this change from within each of the components. And every time we change it, this will update and this will update on the go. So that's it. And notice that we are going to be handling pretty much everything that happens from the data or actually this component, not just the data. So this is the app that view is going to be like our brain, the brain of the application, the centralized place that will handle everything that happens right here. Okay, so let's take care of business because we need to uh, start building the first component. And I'm going to go right here and I'm going to say that we uh, need to create a div. And this is going to be the container. So this component or whatever component we have right here is going to live without, uh, within the class container. So with this one, we're going to be able to start, you know, doing all the centering and everything else. So for now, this is like it is. If I go to our application, notice that it's, uh, you know, it's being centered, which is cool. Okay. So now the component is going to be the first one because we start at zero. So I'm going to go and change it to zero and I'm going to go to the initial. We're going to start right here and we need to start, you know, typing things because we need a, we need something visual. So I'm going to say div and then this div inside, we will have a, a title. So it's going to be ask a question and we should instantly get something. It's maybe just super big because I'm doing a, you know, 175, which is too much. I'm going to reset. And there you go. We get ask a question. It looks a little bit weird. Uh, we're going to, I'm going to tell you why in a minute. So then what we need to do, if you think about this is we need an input, an input text, right? We just need an input text. So I'm going to go right here and say div open and close. And I'm going to go and say class of MB and then three. Now, maybe you're thinking, uh, you know, are, are you're using MB margin bottom three. Isn't it that bootstrap? Yes, it is. And we're going to put bootstrap in a minute because if we don't use uh, anything, it's just going to, it's going to look pretty ugly, just to be honest. So we need to create an input. Now the name of this one is going to be question and uh, it's going to be a type of text. And all of this is just, uh, you know, HTML, not uh, uh, of course, view related. So I'm going to do form control because that's what we do on bootstrap. So I'm going to leave it at form control and then I'm going to be selecting an ID and the ID is going to be question. All right. So far, so good. We are going to need a button. So I'm going to say button open and close. And as you can, you know, uh, with uh, bootstrap, we just get the class BTN. 
So, okay, so this one is going to be kind of a, like the next or go next kind of a button. So I'm going to go and say next. Okay. So I'm going to go there and say that we need a class and then we need a BTN. All right. So for now, this is cool. Now we're going to get something and it looks like crap, which is okay. Now what we need to do, we need to take care of what what's going to happen with the fonts, because notice that the fonts on this one, it's pretty different. And the whole, the whole styling of the button and the input, if I go to the first screen, is way off, right? So, okay, so what we need to do is we need to get Bootstrap. So I'm gonna go right here and find Bootstrap. So when you go to the Bootstrap page, you need to go to Get Started. And on the Get Started, you need to find uh, the CDN. So there you go, there you get it. So you're gonna copy this one. Of course, maybe you're watching this in the future and maybe the page of Bootstrap changed. You just need to find the CDN. Now, where can we put the CDN? So remember, we always have an HTML, which is the visual part of the application, right? So I'm gonna go, is what the browser is gonna know, is gonna read first, the HTML. Everything that happens within view, it's happening inside this div. Uh, but everything is generated, of course, behind the scenes because it's JavaScript. So by just by using Bootstrap, our application is going to change uh, radically. The only thing is not changing is the ugly fonts. So I'm going to go to Google Fonts. So I'm going to go Google and then Fonts. And now the font I'm using right here, we need to select two. Is going to be righteous. This this is the one righteous. This is one. So I'm going to select the style, and I'm also going to do the good old used by everyone Roboto. And I'm going to select the regular, maybe the light one. Why not? And the bold. And the way we link this to our application, it's pretty much the same. We just need to copy this and paste it on the public you know, on the public HTML. And then whenever we want to use the font family right here, they give you how to, oh, I'm using a Fugaz one, which is not something I want. Let me just do it again. This is something I'm doing for a different project. So I guess, you know, got stuck in the memory. So let me just go and do it like this. There you go. So now our application is going to look okay. So we get the input and we get the next. Okay, so let's go to the next section and we're going to start working with all the logic and, you know, making the brain of the application work. Okay, so welcome back. So let's do the question. Now, first, before we can move on, I'm going to give you some information that you might need. So if you go to the GitHub and notice on each section, I'm giving you the link to uh, the repository where you can get the code. So when you go to the code of this uh, application, you can check right here that you're, uh, you get different branches and each branch is going to be the exact code we do on each section. So after I record the video for this section, I stop, upload everything to GitHub on a new branch and then move forward, of course. So if you want to get the exact code from the previous section, you just need to go to that section to create the initial screen branch and you're going to get the code. So you don't even need to, uh, you don't even need to type with me. You just can watch and then just copy paste if you wish. Okay, let's just keep moving forward. Okay, uh, so what do we need to do? So remember, we want, to, we want to catch whatever the user is asking, check if that information is okay. And if it is okay, we want to show the button and move forward if the user clicks on next. So we need to do three, the three main things. And this, these things are gonna be very important because we're gonna reuse them throughout the whole application. So, okay, so first of all, we just need to catch whatever the user is typing right there. And the way we do it on Vue.js is by using the B model. This is a directive that we get by default uh, with uh, Vue.js. And this one, what it does, it will listen to whatever the user is typing and it will put it inside of a property. So first of all, we can, uh, we can say, dude, go there and put that data, you know, whatever we want. We need to create something right here. And the way we do it, we already know it, it's by doing export and then default. And then we need to create the data, the same data we did before. All right, so maybe you already know a little bit of Vue.js. 
But again, I'm targeting this to, you know, to pretty much everyone. So I'm going to say question. That's the name of my property. So now this property is going to be linked to the B model. And once we do this, Vue.js knows that there is a link right here. So every time the user types something, it's going to go and update the data with whatever the user is typing. And at the end of the day, we can check what we have right here, if we have a valid question, and then if we want to move forward or provide an error message. That's the whole idea. And all of this happens live. So if I go right here and use interpolation, this is the way we get to show properties or values within the application doing by uh, doing a two way binding. So if I say question, notice I'm going to go right here. And when I type, it's live just putting the information right here. And it's because it knows what we are typing. And as soon as we do so, it's going to update the value. Just pretty, pretty simple and super powerful stuff. Okay. I made a mistake there. Let it go. So now we know, or the application notes, what, what's the, what the user is typing. Now, the issue is that, of course, we need a way uh, so we can, of course, uh, move on to the next screen. And we need to trigger a function. So well, how can we create functions inside Vue? So what we do is we create the methods property. Now, the, method, uh, the methods property works just like a function. We need to provide a name and then, the, when, then what we're going to do with that function or that method. So in this case, I'm going to call it handle and then next. This is going to be the name of my function. You can call this whatever you wish. It doesn't really matter. So whenever we have an input and we have a, a button that it's type submit or it's a, just a submit button, uh, it's going to submit the form and reload the application, which is always something that we don't want on uh, bio applications or single page frameworks. So by catching the event, we can do prevent and then default. And this is a very good, good, you know, very old type of code, but you know, it works. Okay. So what do we need to do next? Well, we still need to do a lot of things because the only thing we can know now is when the user types a question, nothing else. So, okay. So what I want to do, I want to go and check if we have a question. And if we do have something, I want to show the button. If, uh, if we don't have a question, I don't want to show the button because they cannot move next. So, okay. So if you think about this, this is pretty simple. Now we could do a much more sophisticated, you know, code right here, but I'm going to start simple. So you get a directory called be if. The be if is just like an if else statement. So it's going to ask for something. And if that it's true, this whole thing is going to show. And if it's false, the whole thing will not show. So remember, we are going to be asked for questions. So if we don't have a question, which is empty, it's going to result as false. So since we don't have that, it's not showing. But as soon as we type something, it will be changed to true, right? And that's why it's showing. As soon as I delete, it's back to false. So we don't get the button, right? Pretty simple stuff. Okay, so let's just keep moving forward. So what I want to do I want to type something. I want to click next and I want to move forward to the next section. And notice when I click it, the application is not reloading. And it's of course as well, because we are not tying anything right here. So how can we link this button to this function, right? This is what we want to fire when we, uh, you know, want to move on to the next section. So what we do is we use the at symbol. So this one, we're going to be linking or using uh, an event, an event listener. So this one will say every time that the user clicks this button, what are we going to do? So we're going to go to the fund, to the function or to the method handle next. So if I go right here, I can prove that if I do a console log, you know, something, something like trigger, going to go reload the application, go to the console, going to type something and we're going to do next and then trigger. And if you don't know how to open the console, you need, to, you need to make a right click and go to inspect and inspect and get the console. And notice that we get the trigger. Every time I just click it, we get a call for the trigger. So cool. So this means that this is working. Now, what we need to do, we need to add a little bit of validation because what happens if the user types one single key, one single letter, one single character, 
and they get the option to move next. So what is the question right here? There is, this is not a valid question. So we need to double check that the user is entering at least five characters. And this is going to be a one, the, the validation. Now you can go crazy right here and create uh, diff 15 different types of validations. I'm just going to do one. So I'm going to go and say this question. Remember that we want to check how long that question is, this question. And the way we need to, we can access to this property, which we know, we know now that the, the value changes every time the user changes this, is by doing this question. If you do just question, not going to work. You need to do this dot and question. And this is going to bring uh, whatever you have right here. Okay. So then we just need to ask for the length. If the length if, uh, length is less than five, it means that the question is too short. So I'm going to say console log and then question too short. All right. Cool. So then what happens if it's not too short, if we have more than five uh, characters? Well, I'm going to say move forward. So I'm going to say console log and then move next. And we're going to be handling this in a minute. So I'm going to go right here, I'm going to reload the application. I'm going to type two and we get the question is too short. So we are doing a little bit of validation. As soon as I type more than five, we're going to go move next. So that works. Okay. So, okay. So what I want to do, I want to show an error every time that the user gets into the error stage. So what we can do, we can just do the same thing we did previously. We can create properties. So I'm going to say that the error property, whenever the application starts, is false. So I'm going to go here and maybe I'm going to go and let me just see if we can put this inside of a div. Uh, maybe this one needs to be right here. Made a mistake right there. This one needs to be inside right after the but uh, after the input. And then I want to create a div that will show the error. So I'm going to say div and say your you ask or maybe your question question is too short, something like that. And I'm typing this manually because I know that the question is too short. It's the only validation we are doing. Uh, if you have more validation, you will need to build something more dynamic. If I've, uh, if we have time on this course, I'm going to show you a way. So remember, we just can do the same thing we did right here. If, uh, if error is true, we're going to show the error. And if it's false, we are not gonna, right? So B and then if. Right. So we're going to say if error, just like this, we're going to be showing, you know, the error. So if it's error and if it's true, we're going to be showing that. If it's false, it's not going to show it. So let's see if this works. I'm going to reload. I'm going to go type something and we should be getting into our state. Oh, I'm a mistake. Let's go back. It's less than five. And if I do uh, click, his question is too short. Okay. So this one is listening to error but we are not changing the error. That's the main problem right now. So I'm going to go and say this and then error, error, it's equal to true. So this is going to change it from here. This will detect the change and it will show the error. Now I'm going to go and do a class of error so we can get something a little bit better. If not, it's just going to look very bad. And there we go. Your question is too short, right? So it works. And as soon as we move forward, we're going to go to the move next and everything else. Okay. So what do I want to do next? I want to go to the next, uh, the next screen. That's what we want to do. So I'm going to go and delete this one for now, because this is done. So if everything is okay, what I want to do, I want to clear the errors. We don't need to show the error anymore. So I'm going to say error is going to be false. So then what we need to do is to move on to the next section. So we just cannot do it from here. We need to handle everything from the app. And the app is the parent component of all the other components. So what we need to do is from within this component, tell the parent, which is app, to change the screen. Now, there is no direct way of doing this. We can uh, use props when we go from parent to children but we cannot do uh, a direct, we, can, we don't have a direct connection from children to parent. 
Uh, and that's the way it works. But we have different solutions to, you know, to solve this problem. So what we can do, we can emit an event that will change whatever it is that we want to change right here. So what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it very slowly so you can understand. So what did, what this how, how this works, how can we emit an event is by doing this and then saying the keyword emit. So this is a method called emit, and this is something that it's built in within Vue.js. So this thing needs a name and a value if required. So what I want to do, I want to go to the next section. So I'm going to say go to. This is the name of my uh, reference. This is just an ID. And then I'm going to say, okay, so if we want to go to, I need to go to where? Remember, we are using positions, 0, 1, or 2. And I want to go to the app confirm, which is the 1. So, okay, so this one is going to let the parent know the app, go to a place, and that place is going to be the number 1. Pretty simple. Now, how can we, from the parent, listen to whatever the emit is doing? So the way that this uh, works is by going right here to the actual component and saying, okay, you know, I'm going to be listening for something called go to. I know one of my children's, which is this one, this one, this one, has something that calls go to. And every time my children is calling that go to, I want to listen to that and I'm going to be running a function. So we're going to be running handle go to. All right, so that's how this works. Handle go to. Okay, so the handle go to, or this and the name of the function, and of course you can change the name if you, if you wish, you're going to need to write the function right here at the bottom, just like we did before. We need to go to methods, open and close, handle to go, and remember that this one, it's passing a property, it's passing an argument. So we need to listen to that argument. We need to catch it from here. So it's going to be position. And just by doing this, we can see the position. And you know what? I don't even need to do a console log because this is very simple. We just need to change position, right? From zero to whatever we are specifying right here. So remember, to access this data, we need to do this. We need to do positions or position in this case and say it's equal to position. And this one will change the position to the number one. Pretty simple. So let's just do it. I'm going to reload the application. I'm going to type something. In theory, this is OK. And when I do next, we go to the confirm. Just pretty simple. OK, since now we get the confirm, what we need on the confirm, and let me just show you, is next. And the next, it needs to know the question we asked first. Let me show you again so you can really see this. So I'm going to say, are you sure? I'm going to go next. And the next component needs to have access to the question. So it means that we need to store the question that we have right here somewhere. And how can we do this? Pretty simple. We just use the emit. We are going to be emitting something. We pass that value to the parent, and the parent is going to store it on the data property, which is the central place where we store all the information about the application. So I'm going to go and say result. Actually, not result now. We're going to use the result later, but it's going to be question. All right. So when the application starts, a question is empty, right? But as soon as we change it, it's going to be something else. So how can we, you know, go to the parent and pass the data? Simple. We already did this. I'm going to emit. And there are several ways of sharing data between children and parent. This is like the most basic one and is the first that you, the first one that you learn. So I'm going to do this question because the information is going to be inside this question. So now remember the parent needs to listen to this. If not, you know, it's just not going to work. So we need to go there and say, whenever the children is calling question, I'm going to go and handle what? Well, we can handle question since we are doing handle go to handle and then question. All right, so I'm going to go right here. I'm going to go there and say every time that this gets called, I'm going to be grabbing whatever we get as an argument. And then I'm going to say this, that question is equal to 
whatever we get is a value question in this case and every time that this happens you know we do this the application will know what is the question so at the end of the day we can reuse this value from different components and that's what we're going to do on the next section so let's just do a go right here and see if we get an error i'm going to ask a question you know are you sure whatever and i'm going to go next and we get the confirm so that's cool we don't get errors we get a warning because this uh value right here needs kind of a needs something we have a just a text which is a little bit weird so we just need to do uh, something right here and for now we're just going to do a, a div uh we are going to need to do a div correctly sometimes the autocomplete hates me it's just the way it works so i'm going to go do it again i'm going to type something quick and if we go we don't get you know the warning okay so let's go to the next one and let's do the confirm this one since we have everything going on on the initial and we have the go to and everything else this one is going to be really simple okay so welcome back and on this one we're going to handle the, uh, the screen number two so this one will be very simple so first we need to create the template right here so i'm going to go and say that we have an h3 and this one is going to be your question is and then colon and we need to show the question now the the, the problem is that we need a way to show or to pass from parent to the children the actual question so how can we pass data from parent to children so we do it with props now the parent already knows what the question is uh, by the time we get to this component so again the way we pass props is by going right here and doing a column and providing a key so in this case i'm going to call it question but this could be whatever you wish it could be clown it could be dog or cat or whatever but this this uh, needs to be tied or binded to whatever data you want to pass which is question so i'm going to go and say question it's equal to question so now this component or any other component have uh, the ability to access that data and use it somehow now of course we need to do this on the javascript side of things so we need to create a, a nice export default open and close and the way we catch the props that we are getting from the parent is by using the property props we need to open an array and we need to use the name the exact name that we are passing right here this one not this one this one so i'm going to go and say that we are going to be awaiting for a property called question if you don't just don't do this you get no access to that property so now i can go right here and say that i'm going to create a div let me do it properly uh, just a div and the class of this one i'm going to call it a viewer just to call it something and remember this class is on the style so you're going to need to use that class and the way we access properties or any data that lives inside data for example you're going to be using interpolation and we're going to use question because that's the name of, of the prop so if i go and start over again i'm going to go reload the application i'm going to say are you sure and then i'm going to go next and we get are you sure and this is sure oh this is uh, this is i'm sorry this is a brand this is the brand that uh, makes microphones and you know i i'm a musician too so yeah so okay so are you sure yes we are sure cool or no we are not so that's what we need to decide here if we want to move forward or we want to move back so this means that we need buttons so i'm going to go and create a container for the buttons so i'm going to say class and for now you know what i'm going to leave this empty we're going to do this later for now i'm just going to do class so what i'm going to need is a line maybe and then we just need to create a button this button is going to do something but this one will be class of btn and then i'm going to go and say decided so this one is the move next kind of a you know button and the other one is going to be the go back or maybe ask a new question ask a new question all right cool now of course we need a way to the trigger the button and go back or go forward so we're going to go and create some methods just like we did with the initial whenever we click on something we're going to do something so i'm going to go here and i'm going to say whenever we click this button we are going to go and then next 
and the other one is going to be go back, right? So go and then back. Now we don't have these methods, we need to create them. So I'm going to go to the export default and I'm going to say that we have some methods. The first one is going to be go next and the other one is going to be go back. And what we need to do uh, here is just pretty simple. We kind of already have that information. Remember, we have the go to, the, this emit go to. And since all the components are sharing the properties and the listeners, we just can say, okay, so if we want to go next, it means that we want to move from the screen number one to the screen uh, number two. So I'm going to say this emit go to and go to the screen number two. And on the other one, we're going to say go to the number one. Now, if we go to the number one, or actually it's the number zero, the first screen, it means that we want to ask a new question. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go and set the question back to empty. I want to go here and say whatever we had right there back to empty. And we already have a handle question that it will set the question to whatever we say so. So we're going to reuse that. So I'm going to go there and say whenever we go back, we're going to emit an event called question. We are already listening to that. And we're going to say that the question now is equal to blank to empty. We start over. And I'm going to go and reload the application. I'm going to go and go to the, our application and start over. I'm going to say something or something like that. I'm going to move next and we get something which is the question. If we go ask next, next uh, the ask a new question, I'm going to go back. So that works. And we are clearing the state. So I'm going to ask, ask something else. I'm going to do next and I'm going to decide it. And we go to result which is the next component. Super cool. All right, so that works. Let's try it again. I'm going to go ask a new question. We go back. If we go there, we decide it. And then we go next. Now, again, we're getting the same problem than before because we need to add some content to the component number three. But we're going to do it, of course, in a, in, a, in, a, in a couple of minutes. And okay, so we are done on this screen. We don't need to do anything else. Now, the only thing that is bothering me right now before going to the final component, the final stage, is that everything is very static, uh, all the transitions. I would like to add a little bit of fade in, fade out kind of a movement, and we can easily do this by using CSS. So let's go to the next section and add a little bit of transitions to this. Okay, so welcome back. So on this one, we are gonna add a little bit of transitions. So there are, you have many, many ways of adding transitions in the app view world. So what I want to do in this case, I want to first go to the animate CSS. This is what I want to do first. So this is a library that we, we can use to animate things with CSS, which is pretty simple. It was one of the oldest CSS libraries out there. And it's the one we use the whole time. Okay, so first of all, we just need to install it. And I'm going to go and say npm install animate CSS minus save. If you scroll down on the application and any, any animate style is the web page, uh, this is what we need to do. So I'm going to call go right here. I'm going to kill the server. I'm going to do it like this. And I'm going to go and do uh, not that one. I'm going to go and do this one npm. And let me just do it like this. And then npm install animate CSS. So this is going to install. It's going to take just a minute or maybe less. And what we need to do once uh, everything is installed, I'm going to go and do npm run serve. It's going to start the server again. So we need a way to tell the application, our application, that we are going to use that library, that, you know, that CSS. And the way we, and we have many ways, but the most uh, direct way is by going right here to our application and we're going to say import and then animate CSS. And that's it. That's it. That's the only thing we need to do. So now the CSS of this library is going to be flowing in our application so we can use it. So, okay. so the first thing I want to uh, animate or give a transition to is going to be the button. Every time it shows, I want to do something. And the way we do it, and everything is on the documentation right here. The way we do it is by using or attaching a class called animate underscore underscore animated. And all animations or everything that you want to animate needs to have that class. So when this button shows, it's going to, of course, do the animation. That's the way it works. 
Now, how can you decide which animation you want to use? So right here, you get all the animations that you can use. You have some fading in, bouncing in, entrances. In this case, I'm going to do something simple, which is the fade in. I'm going to copy right here. You can copy the class name and then you can go right here and say, OK, so I'm going to use the animate fade in. And this one is going to work just right away. I'm going to go and type it. And as soon as I do so, when it enters, is going to do the transition. And every time it enters, it's going to do the transition. Now, behind the scenes, how BF works, let me just show you this BF, is that if this is false, it will remove the element from the DOM. So every time that it shows, it's entering for the kind of a, the first time because it's not on the DOM. All right, so that works. So I want to do the same thing for the other thing. Every time that the application enters, I want to give a transition to the buttons right here. So we just need to pretty much copy paste. I'm going to go and do maybe a fade in. Maybe we can change the style if we wanted to. So the confirm is going to be class. And then animate it, animate it, or animate, animate it. And then the fade in. Maybe we could do something else like bounce uh, in. Yeah, something, you know. Ah, there we go. I like that. So I'm going to do the bounce in. So animate, bounce in. And I'm going to go and reload the application and see if this works. And it kind of works. So I'm going to go there. I'm going to move next. And we can get it. Now, what I would like to do, I would like to run the animation a little bit after the component mounts. As soon as we, you know, we get it on the screen, this is going to wait for some amount of time. And then it's going to show. So we could do it manually, but the library gives us an already kind of a built-in uh, animation or delay. So what we need to do is we need to say animate underscore underscore use the keyword delay and then dash and how much time it is you had you can do up to five up to five seconds so if i do one s it's just going to wait for one second and then run the whole animation so if i go and start over i'm going to ask a question i'm going to do next one second and then we get it so pretty simple okay so one more thing i would like to do before we go and do the final result is that when we reload the application, I want this component to fade in. And if we go to the next one, I want the component to fade out and fade in again. And we have an example, uh, example on the final one. I'm going to go, do next, fades out, and then we get a fade in. So with this one, we are not going to do it with CSS. It's a little bit tricky with CSS. But the cool, the cool thing is that we get a ready-to-go component built in with uh, Vue.js and it's called the transition. Now this, of course, the transition component or functionality, uh, it's pretty big. We can do a lot of things and I just cannot cover this on less than two hours. So I'm just going to make it work and I'm going to show you how this works. So the transition will, of course, run a transition and it's a CSS transition. We don't need to install anything. This is not like React that we need to install the package separately. It's just going to go and run it. So by default, this is going to create some CSS behind the scenes to whatever component we are wrapping this. So I'm going to go and say that we need to provide a name. So the name, it's going to be fade. I'm going to go and say appear. So this means that the component, every time it appears, it will run the transition. Now, remember that we are changing components. So we are, you know, showing one, then hiding one, and then showing the other one. So the way that this works is that to show or to wait, now let me just show you on the final one. It's just kind of hard to picture. So when the application starts, I'm going to go there. And then if I move next, this one needs to hide. And then the next one needs to show, uh, of course. So the, the transition has no idea what to do unless we tell the application to wait for, for the previous component to be completely out to show the new one. So the way we do it is by uh, going right here and saying a mode. And I know I'm going a little bit fast in this, and it's because this is very, you know, extensive. And I'm just showing you how it works. But we could spend two, three hours talking about transitions. Okay, so that's going to work. Now, of course, if I do something like this in, in our application, it's still not working. Uh, I'm going to go there. It just doesn't work. 
And it's because we need to provide some CSS transitions to the application. Right now, we have no instruction. How can we do it? Well, we need to write some CSS and it's going to be a pretty dumb CSS. Now, the transition is looking for something called fate. That's what it's looking. And we have different classes and we need to respect the names, but all the names will start with the keyword faith, uh, fate. So we have three different stages. The enter from, enter, and then from. That's the first state that it's going to listen. And if this is the first state, it means that the uh, element will fade from zero to something else. But this one is the initial one. So we're going to make the uh, block opacity and then zero. So it will start kind of a not visible. So then we'll go to the next stage, which is going to be fender, uh, fender, no, fade, and then enter active. So the fender active, it means what's going to happen when you go to the next stage, you know, we start at zero, how the transition is going to happen. And then it's going to be the other one, which is the fade. And let me just do it first, enter, and then two. So if you think about it, the, this makes sense, how it starts, what happens in between, and what is the final state of that element. So the final state is going to be visible. So opacity number one. And the active is going to be what transition are we going to do to get from here to here? So we just want to transition. Uh, I'm going to say transition, if it's just, you know, maybe giving me the out to complete uh, transition. There we go. And I'm just going to say, dude, go and do a 0 0.5 type of transition. And then we have the other side of things. You know what's going to happen when we hide the element? Well, it's going to be the same thing than this, but instead of being of using the keyword enter behind the scenes, we'll use the keyword leave. And it's just the same thing. Oh, of course, I made a mistake there. It's going to be leave. Let me just copy this one. So it's going to be leave and then leave too. Now, of course, everything is going to be backwards because if we are uh, removing the element from the screen, the from, which is the starting point, is going to be one visible. And we want to transition it to zero. So we are doing something simple right here, but this could be a transform or changing colors. Could be whatever you wish. So I'm going to go reload the application. Now let's see if this works. So we're going to already see a transition. Notice it's fading. So if I do this, I'm going to go next, fades out and fades in, and then we get the buttons. How great is that? So again, this goes a long way. You can do crazy things and you get other transition components you can use within view. But again, this is just a tiny uh, two hours uh, project and we are doing a lot. That's why I'm going a little bit fast because we still need to do a lot. And just two hours is not a lot of time, but that's fine. Maybe we can finish it. So what are we going to do next? Well, we just need to go to the results and on the results, we need to create a bunch of functions. Because we need to create an array, we need to create a loop, we need to show the results and then reset the app or get a new value. So we need to do a lot. Let's go to the next one and finish the application. Okay, so welcome back. So let's finish the application. So, okay, so what do we need to do? We'll need to go to results. And now the results screen is going to be pretty similar to this one. We still have the two buttons. We still have an H3 and a viewer. So you know what? I'm just going to copy. I'm just going to copy. There's no need to type this uh, all over again. So I'm going to go make this a little bit better because it's just a bit messy. All right, it's going to go there and I'm going to copy the contents. Of course, we need to make some changes right here. So I'm going to go paste it. And your question is, is going to be your answer is. So your uh, answer is. Now the viewer is going to show something else, which is going to be the result. Now we don't have that property. So I'm going to go and do it right now. So it's going to be results or maybe a result because it's just one single result. So this result, it's something that we will get from within the app. So we're going to pass it as props, just like we are doing on the confirm. So I'm just going to go ahead and create it right now. We don't have this prop. We are going to create it in a couple of minutes, but I'm just going to leave it ready. So I'm going to say export default. 
and prompts is going to be, and then results. All right. So then we have the buttons. The buttons are going to be exactly the same, but what it changes is going to be what are we going to do with them? We're going to start and then over, and the other one is going to be this side again. All right. So now the name of the methods, they also need to change. So this one, I'm going to call it start and then over, and the other one is going to be uh, get result. And you're going to see why I'm changing the logic right here in a minute. So, okay. So of course we need to fix this because the application will start failing because we are calling methods that doesn't exist. Uh, they don't exist. So we're going to need to do it. So I'm going to go and say methods. And for now, I'm just going to say that the start over is going to do something. And then we have the get results. Uh, and that one, it's right here. Cool, 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 cool. So, okay, so what do we need to do? Well, we are going to need to get a result. Right now, the application has no idea of that result. And remember, we need to pass it somehow. So, okay, so I'm going to say that we are going to be passing a prop called result. And that result is going to be equal to result. So, what, you know, which result? Well, the one we will get, or we will just modify or alter every time that we get a new result. So now the application, of course, is not going to fail and that's fine. Okay. So how can we make this work? So remember, we start at the beginning. So we ask a question, whatever question, then we go next, then we get the buttons. We can go back and we know that that works. But when we decide it, we're going to move next and we get your answer is, and then start over and decide again. So we need to generate an answer and I'm getting uh, something weird right here, but that's fine. So what we need to do is to generate a, a, a result and we're going to base this from an, a, a random array. So we need to create a random function with a random list of something. I've already got the list right here ready to go. So I don't type everything. You will need to maybe if you don't want to pause the video and type everything yourself, you can go to GitHub to the link I'm giving you on the on this video and just copy, copy the array. So this is going to be not that one. This is going to be the list. And it's going to be yes, no, maybe all, you know, answers that we can use the whole time. Uh, so not sure. Try again. Ask a friend. Call the police. Wh whatever. It's just some dumb list. So now every time that we reach the final component, I want to trigger a function that will get a random value from here. That's the whole idea. So I'm going to go and I'm going to say that this function will call show result. Now this show, show result will do something else. We'll call a different function. And I always like to separate things on different methods because then later, if I want to use the different methods to do different things, Everything is just split it on different parts so I can reuse them. So I'm going to go and the show result is going to call a different function called generate or something like that. And the name is completely up to you. Okay. So it's going to be called generate result. That's the name of my, my function. All right. So let me go here. Uh, let me go here. So this function, uh, the generate result, what it needs to do, it needs to go to the list and get a random value. And since I like to get, you know, divide everything on different methods, I'm going to create a different method that it's going to get a random and then value. And you, you're going to see why in a minute I'm splitting everything on different parts. So the get random value, what it needs to do at the end of the day, the only purpose of this function is going to be returning a random value. So I'm going to say return. Every time we call this method is going to return something. What is going to be returning? Well, I need to go to the list and get or something random. So I'm going to say this, then list just like this, open and close. And we need to do the good old, you know, loop uh, to, you know, the, the old, good old random value. So it's going to be then random open and close. And then we need to multiply for the disk that list. Oh, 
uh, dot and then we do the length. And this one is going to give us a random value. That's what, what it does. This is the whole game. So now when we call this one, this one needs to call this one and this one will call this one. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do let and then rand equals two and I'm going to call this function. We already know this. So it's going to be this get random value. All right. So remember this function generate result is going to get called by the show result. So at the end of the day, this one needs to return something, right? That's, that's a, what, that's what this is. It just needs to return something. So what it's going to do is going to set the return, the return, uh, the return, or it's going to say, set the result to something else. Remember we are handling everything with the keyword result and we are passing the props. So, okay. So instead of returning something to this function, I'm going to go and handle this with this result equals to whatever we get on rand. And we need to do something right here that we're going to do it in a minute. But for now, I'm just going to leave it like this. So remember, we want to call show result. All right. So this one, it's equal to this dot and then generate result. So, okay. So from within this component, we are going to be calling show result. Show result will go generate the result. It's going to call the value. And whenever it comes back, it's going to set the result to a random value of the array. That's the only thing we are doing. It's super simple. Now you can select everything and do format document because it's a bit messy. There you go. Okay. So at this point, what we need to do is to get a result. Whenever this component mounts or we show the component, we need to tell the parent, dude, get me a result. And how are we going to do it? You know, how can we do this? Well, remember we can, we can emit something, an event to the parent and the parent needs to run show result, just like we did before. Everything is just super simple and it's very, re always very kind of a repetitive. So I'm going to call my function show result. So the show result, I'm going to call it show result as well. So, okay. So now whenever we emit something called show result, this one is going to go and run our function show result. Show result will do all of this. We know how this works. Okay. So now the children needs to call that show result every time that the component mounts. So what we can do is we can use a method, which is a life cycle that we get with the view. We get a lot of life cycles. Of course, I, we cannot cover this in two hours, but the mounted is going to be every time that the component gets mounted, this, uh, this component shows on the screen or gets mounted in this case, this method is going to run always. And it's going to run once when the component gets mounted, when it's on the screen. So on this one, what we can do, we can do this dot dollar sign emit open and close. And I don't remember the name of the function. I believe it was a uh, show result. That's the event listener. Yeah. So I'm going to go there and say show result. So we are telling dude, go and execute this function. The function is going to get executed. The result is going to change. And since we are catching the prop of the results on this component is going to show the result. How easy is that? So I'm going to go reload the application. And at this point, we should be getting something. So I'm going to go, I'm going to do next. That's cool. I'm going to decide it and we get no and it works. Okay. So let's keep going. So what I want to do now is not the start over. What I want to do is the decide again. So the decide again, what it will do, it will just get the random value again. It's just going to run that function show result one more time. So if we go right here to get result, that's what we do. So I'm going to go and say this emit show result. Now notice that we have this on methods and we can use on the mounted the methods. So if I do this and then uh, start over, oh, I'm going to make a mistake right there. Uh, this one needs to go here. All right. So if we call this function instead of emitting, this is still going to work. So we don't need to emit. We just can create the method and then reuse it on the same component. Okay. So remember, I'm just want to get the result. Now we are going to get a problem. Maybe 
I'm going to click it, right? We get no. I'm going to click it again. We get yes. Then ask a friend. I'm going to again, again, again. And hopefully I'm, I'm you know, landing into... In the, uh, there we go. I just clicked again and I got maybe. Now this function, what it does, it gets a random value out of uh, this list. So sometimes it's going to get this when you run it. Sometimes it's going to get this and sometimes it's going to get this. But it has no idea that what you want to get is a different value from the one that you have before. So if uh, we are generating the result again, and uh, let's say that we have right here as, as a result, we have no. And we click the button to decide again, and the random is going to fall on no again. So we are getting the same thing. So what I want to do, I want to write something, a script right here that will prevent this. And if we are landing on the same uh, value again, I want to go and get a new random value. That's why I'm doing this get result function. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do go to if, and I'm going to say this, and then result, it's different than nothing. First, I'm checking that we, uh, you know, we have some value. And if that, that's the case, we are just going to do some JavaScript. And all this is just vanilla JavaScript. I'm going to check if the rent is equal to the this result, we have before we change it then of course i'm gonna go and do something else because i don't want it if this is no and the one we have on result is no this function will run as many times until we get something different right so what happens if it's if, if the values are, the values are the same we are using a, a variable right here so i just can run the function again <laughs> pretty simple i'm just gonna go and say that the rand needs to go and get a new value. So the next time this comes in is going to be something else. Hopefully it's going to be something else. And if it is something else, it will not execute this. And we're going to go here and provide the value. So now every time that we do something and we decide again, uh, we are not going to get the same value ever. We always get something different. All right. So now let's do the start over. Now the start over, it's pretty, pretty simple. The only thing you need to do is to go back to default. Just go back to the initial state. So I'm going to go right here and do this. So the start over is going to do a this. Uh, we need to emit something, emit. And the name of this one is going to be start over, right? Pretty simple. So this one, of course, uh, needs to emit an, uh, an event and the parent needs to be ready to catch that event. And right now it's just not, it's not ready. So I'm going to go and say start over. So what do we need to do? We just need to run a method. We don't have the method. We just need to create it. So I'm going to go there and start over. All right. So what do we need to do on the start over? We just need to reset everything. And if you think about this, the three properties that handle the whole application is going to be position, question, and result. So the only thing we need to do is just set this back to default. So I'm going to say this position and then equals to zero. And this, let's go to this one. And this one is going to be the question. The question is a string, so it's going to be an empty string. And the other one is going to be the result now that I think about this result and it's still again just an empty string so that's it that's the the whole application i'm going to do some improvements if we have time but first what i would like to do before we do some improvements is to post this or deploy to hosting so we can see it live so let's see if this works first i'm going to go make a mistake or we get the that there i'm going to go and we get the question is too short that, that's fine that's cool so let me ask you again, should I do it? All right, so I'm going to go next. Should I do it? Yeah, we can go back. We know that I'm going to copy so I don't have to type it again. We're going to go there. We're going to do next. We're going to go and decide it and we get not sure. Just try again. OK, that's fine. So what do we can do? Decide again. Yes, so I'm going to do it. And if I start over, we go back to the beginning and everything starts again. So starts again 
Right. Cool. So that's it. That's the end of the application. So, okay. So I'm going to check if we still have time. And this is something, you know, it's is an error from the, uh, from the animate, which is a little bit weird. Sometimes you get the horizontal line. So I'm not going to do it by my, my uh, advice would be not to put the horizontal line, maybe attach a class to this, uh, to this div. Right, maybe a different class, like I don't know, line or something like that. And this is something that you can do, and uh, just provide a border instead of line, because that line is just messing with the animate right here. It's just a little bit weird. Okay. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to check if you have time, and if we do, I'm going to be posting this to a server. I'm going to we're going to do some deploying. Okay. So welcome back. So uh, since we have a working application. What I would like to do is just to put it on a hosting so we can have it on a more real uh, life scenario, right? Just a real server. So the easiest server where you can put your application, it's search. And search is for static applications just like this one, okay? We are going to create a static application. So we are going to be using this. Now, first, I'm going to take you to the Vue.js and then documentation. Let's see if I can find it. I'm going to go to Vue.js and remember, we need to go to the version number three. So if I go to the guide, uh, maybe it's showing right here. Let me just find it. Uh, what we need to do before we put something in production, what we need to do is to build, to generate a build or just to go to deployment. So it says production deployment on tooling, go there. So whenever you go there, it will give you some instructions of how, you know, different things we can do. We are not going to cover this one right now, but what we need to do is we need to run a build and it's just not telling you right here, which is weird, but that's fine. So, okay, so let me just show you what we need to do. Uh, we need to run a build because if we put uh, this on the actual server, the browser will have no idea what to do because this is a node project, the server and everything we are making it work right here. It's being bundled and created by the CLI we installed uh, previously uh, for Vue.js. So yeah, it's not real. It's something that we get on screen and we get, uh, we, make, we make it work on development, but this is not going to work when we put it on a server. So what we need to do is we need to deploy it. So I'm going to go uh, to create a build, sorry. Now I'm going to go and do a clear. I'm going to do, make it a little bit bigger. Let me just go right here. So whenever you create a build or you set it ready for production, if you go to the package that Jason notice that you, when you run serve, it will create a uh, development server, but then you have a build. So the build will create a bundle with some JavaScripts and some HTMLs. And what it is essentially, it's a compressed version of the whole application you just made uh, that will serve to the server. You know, we'll, we'll put on the server on search in this case, and that version has HTML and just JavaScript. No node, no nothing. Okay, so that's fine. I'm going to go right here and we're going to run it. So I'm going to go and say NPM and then run and then build. And this is something that you need to do always when you deploy to production. This is just common. Now, behind the scenes, it's not just converting the project to JavaScript and HTML. It's uh, creating a much better version. And let me show you, it will tell you right here. It will create different files. It will zip them. So it will compress them. And it will just, you know, make a very enhanced version of your application. Because what we do right here is deployment, is uh, development. So notice this build complete, uh, the disk directory, it's ready to be deployed. What disk directory? <laughs> so notice right here, you get the disk directory and, and you get a standard application, you know, with an indexed HTML, everything is just, you know, zipped and compressed and you get your icon, your JavaScript with all the, uh, the view information and even the CSS is being divided and chunked. So again, it's just the application that we need to deploy. It's cool. So now we need a place where we can deploy, but we don't deploy the whole thing. We just deploy the dist directory. That's the idea. So how can we do it with search? So this is the most easy. This is the easiest way of deploying a project. 
So what we need to do first, of course, is to install search in our computer. I already have it installed, so I guess it's going to be very, very fast. And okay, once everything is installed uh, from the search side of things, you just need to call search. I'm not sure if I'm already logged in. Maybe it's going to it's going to ask me to log in. Uh, but if this is the first time you enter to search, it will ask you to log in. So as soon as I do search, it says running as, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to just kill the server. I'm going to do this. I'm just going to kill it. Just kill the operation. And let me just double check how to log out. All right. So it was very simple. It's, it's search log out. So I'm not logged in to search anymore. I'm just starting over. So uh, what do we need to do? Well, whenever you want to deploy it, you just do search. Search will ask you to, of course, log in. So I'm going to enter my email and say d.coding. And this is just uh, an account that I use for, you know, for testing. So it's going to be at and then gmail.com. This is just a fake account I use. So it's, of course, for the coding revolution. So I'm going to press enter and notice it says log in or create search account by entering the email and password. So if you're already registered, it will log in. But if you're not registered, it will just create a registration for you. So I'm going to use the password. Let me just type the password and remember it. So it's going to be something like that. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to do like that. And notice that every time that you type the password, you type something is not showing you. So make sure you type the correct uh, password. Okay. So once you do the password, it will let you go and go in and uh, running as, you know, and just, just again, it's going to give you the access. Then it says project. And this is the link to your application. So it's going to say, okay, so what do you want to publish inside uh, search, right? Inside this, the real server is the decider, which is the root of your application. Well, no, if we think about this, if we do this, it's going to put the whole thing including dist, node modules, and everything else, which is something we don't want. What we want to say is go and publish the dist directory. As soon as I, pre I press enter, it's going to give you a domain. You can make a selection or, you know, make a change right here, but it needs to be a free domain. So I'm just going to use that domain they are giving me. I'm going to press enter and see what happens. It's going to do the upload, blah, 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 blah. And then it's going to say success. That's it. So now if I go to this domain, is a domain they give you, of course, I go there and our application is going to be working on that domain. So the deploy is done. And now everything works. If I do some typing, we get the question, we get to decide it. And we can start over. So it's great. We are deploying to production. So search is the easiest way of deploying uh, uh, an application. Of course, you can add your own domain. It's very simple to do. You can re, of course, delete projects or just remove projects. And everything you do, you do it from right here from the terminal. That's why it's super easy. All right, so we made an application. Uh, everything works and we deployed it to production. Now, I would like to make some improvements because there's something that really bugs me, which is the error, how we handle the errors. This is fine, but I don't like it that much. So what we can do, we could do something better, like showing a toast, something like this. And it's just really great. So I'm going to go and uh, show you the plugin or the, it, it, we will install a plugin to do this. So it's called for me forma and it's view toaster. That's the name of the plugin. And yeah, and on this one, I'm going to just going to cover how to use the plug, how to install and use plugins, which is pretty simple. Now, let me go to their GitHub application right here. And notice it's just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So uh, I'm going to go to the repository. And right here, they give you the information of how to use it. It's very simple. And they give you a demo. Uh, so right here, you can access the demo and check how this works. Pretty simple. Now, of course, we need to install first. So I'm going to go, just kind of copy this. I'm going to go right here at the bottom. I'm going to kill the server and do the installing. Okay, so after everything gets installed, let me just close all right now. After everything is installed, you need to do npm run serve. And uh, how can we, you know, make the application or make the plugin uh, work within our application? 
So first of all, you just need to import the uh, component or, you know, the library. So we need to import toaster from Meforma and then toaster. Now, the thing is that the application, our app, needs to be informed or, or needs to use this plugin. And the way we do so is by going right here and say that we create a const of app. And this will make sense in a minute. And now on that app, we do the create application. So what we do, we are creating an instance of Vue.js and we are storing that instance on this variable app. So whenever we want to mount, now we are not going to go and do it directly. What we're going to do, we're just going to call that instance. And what this does, it gives us the power of doing app and then dot use, uh, we use like this, open and close and do toaster. So if I save it, it reload the application, of course, everything still works, we get no warnings. But again, you know, the whole idea is that we use the toast. So once we do a use uh, toaster and we use the plugin or the library, this toaster will be available on all the components. We can go to any component and just run a toast if we wanted to. It's pretty simple. Now, what I want to do, well, let me just show you how this works. I'm going to go and go maybe to uh, the first one, which is the initial. And right now we have this error. I don't want to do it like this. I'm just going to go and remove the error. That's the old code. Now we have new code. So every time we go into error state, I want to show a toast. And the way we do it is by doing this, then we do toast, which is this, that toast. And since the application already knows that we are using a toaster, it knows what to do. And the way we call the method, it's show, because that show method lives inside the toasts. And what this needs is a message error or warning, something like that, warning. Okay, so when we do show, the problem is that this needs a message, but it also needs to know what is the type. So I'm going to go and say type. And in this case, it's going to be uh, errors. Now we can also check this on the documentation. If you go maybe right here, uh, maybe here, notice that we get the top left and we get an error. And this one is red. This one is again, warning. This one is info success and default. So this kind of follows the same idea we get uh, with uh, uh, with Bootstrap. And if I go to the documentation, notice that it says this toast and then show, but you can also do success or error or warning. So in theory, if I do error right here, and let me show you the easy way, and then I'm going to show you the pro way. Uh, so we're going to say toast error, and then we show the message. So as soon as I save this and I go to the application, I type something, or maybe I go into the error state, we get the error warning. It's that simple. Now, the thing is that, of course, since you're uh, creating an error system, you should be able to run the same error or uh, maybe uh, to run the same error from a centralized place, just like we are doing right here with the component. Right now, we are going to only use the error right here, but what, in the f what happens if in the future you need to run it from different components. You're just going to need to copy paste, maybe change all the settings. So that some, sometimes it doesn't work. You need a centralized uh, code. And I'm going to use it right here. And since we did the uh, emit all over the place, I'm going to reuse it. So I'm going to call this, on, this one handle toast. Toast. There we go. So the handle toast will receive some values. Which values? Well, depends. If it's an error, it's going to receive the message of the error. And if it's a success, it will receive uh, a success. That's it. So I'm going to save values for now. Okay. So I'm going to go and say that every time we call this, I'm going to be running the toast. It's going to be toast dot and the show, uh, the show property that we get right here. Let me make this a little bit bigger because I believe it's too small. There we go. Notice we get success, error, show, and info. But the show can display a message, but it will also take options. And this is what I want to show you. So the show first one needs a message. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to be pass, I'm going to pass values with a, as, an, as, a, as an object. So I'm going to say values dot message. 
we don't have this, but when we pass the property or this argument right here, we're going to be passing something like message equals to something. And then the type is going to be equal to error or success or whatever it is that we want to pass. This is why we are creating this function because we want to create reusable code the whole time. That's, you know, the smart way that what good developers do. So values and we get a message. So now what we can do, we need to select the type and the type is going to be part of our arguments. So it's going to be values and then type. And then you can do a bunch of things. Now we are just going to be passing message and the type, but we could pass whatever we want. So now we're going to do position and the, not the this position, it's going to be chest position. This is a property of the toast. So I'm going to say that this one is going to go to the top. You can select bottom left, you know, check the documentation for that. You can select the duration and on oh, milliseconds, it's going to be 200. What else can you do? So you can pause on hover. So let me see if I can get it right here. You can do all of this. All right. So pause on hover. It means that if you hover the toast, it's going to pause. I don't want this. This is the default behavior. I'm just going to disable. You're going to get the error two seconds, and then it's going to go away and everything is going to happen at the top. So now this handle toast needs to be triggered by something. How we did it. You know, we already know we are just going to be listening to handle toast. And every time someone calls the handle toast, we're going to show whatever it is that we are doing right here. Super simple. So I'm going to go to the initial value. So right now, the only one that knows how to handle errors is the initial value. So I'm going to go there and I'm going to say that we are going to be doing a this. Then we are going to do an, an emit, of course, because that's what we want to do. Emit, open and close. What was the name? I don't remember. I'm going to go and copy. It's handle toast. Cool. Oh, sorry for that. Handle toast. Okay. So there you go. We're going to emit handle toast. Now, remember that this one needs some arguments. So we're going to need to pass an object because it's expecting an object. And then we just pass the type, which is going to be error, but it could be success or whatever you wish. Then I'm going to do coma and we need a message. So the message is going to be, I don't know, your question. And actually, we do have it right here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to copy. Okay. So your question is too short. So let's see if this hap is this works. I'm going to reload the application. I'm going to go there. I'm going to reload it. And uh, there you go. Now, what is the advantage of this? First, uh, first of all, it's just much nicer, right? <laughs> just much better. But now what you can do, you can check for multiple things and always show the same error. And now you can dynamically change the type. Now it can be success or info or warning. And at the top, you can, again, you can customize your message because maybe you want to add more rules. And you know what? I'm, I'm going to do it right now because it's super simple. I'm going to go and say that we have an if, right? And then we are going to be checking for a different thing, else if. And if not, we're going to move forward. If everything's okay, we move forward. Okay, so what can we check right here? Well, I'm going to check the opposite. If it's too small, we're going to say it's too small. But if it's too big, like 50 characters, we're going to say it's too big. That's it. But now, since we have a global and centralized and reusable function, what we can do is call the same. But this one could be warning if we wanted to, or success or error. Of course, in this case, it's going to be an error, so I'm going to leave it at error. But now it's going to be your question is too long. So now we can dynamically change the messages by using this same function. That's why we do this. Okay, so let's just give it a try. I'm going to do this. We know that the question is too short. And I'm going to try, you know, just go crazy right here. And then next, and the question is too long. Okay, so now we have a new version of our application. And we know this, we have a new version. So we need to go to a search. So we have a domain right now, but now it's a different version. How can we push this to production? So first of all, since we, you have a new version, uh, let me just do clear it again. You have a new version, you need to rebuild your project. So it's going to be npm 
npm, then run, and then build. This is going to create a new version of your dist that it's just going to take one second. And now what we need to do is we need to redeploy everything to search. So this is done. So how can we do it? Let me just make this a little bit bigger because maybe it's too small. So the way we, it works with search is that you need to call search again because we are already logged in and you need to do minus minus domain. And this is going to be redeployed to a very specific domain. So the domain is this one, puzzling uh, dust search. All right. So when you put the domain right here, uh, this actually, you need to change this. Uh, it needs to be just the domain. It's going to go to that place and redeploy. Now, you have several ways of doing this, much easier ways, but this is just what you get in the documentation at first. So, of course, if you really like search and use it much more, uh, the documentation is a must. You know, you need to read the documentation. So, I'm going to press enter. This is going to recognize this, of course. Uh, and let me do this. So we want to deploy the disk directory. It's going to recognize this, of course, domain under my domain, because every time you create or you push something to production, that domain gets, uh, you know, it's stored under your account. So it knows. So I'm going to go and do dist. It will redeploy. And well, after it's done, we can go to our application, reload it and see if this works. Hopefully it's working and it is. Cool. So now we have the new version. There we go. And we get it's too long. All right. So that's it. So everything is going to be on GitHub. So be feel free to get the code. And you know what? I'm going to show you right now. Maybe we don't have time, but just going to go and show you that every time that I push something, I push it right here. So whenever you go to GitHub, always remember to, to, to check the branches. So of course I need to push to to uh, to GitHub the code for this section. So you're gonna get it right here as number seven or number eight, but you get the code for everything, and on master you can have the final application. All right, all right. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Check my account on Udemy. I have some other you know courses, and I've also created uh, other free courses. So feel free to check them out. All right. So see you on the next one.